Hi everyone, my name is Tara Gumar. I'm a PhD in finance at the University of Chicago, and I set up a mini MBA course series on a variety of topics in order to help share some of the things that I've learned that may benefit a wider community. This is going to be a lecture series that covers topics related to insider trading. And this first lesson will be a definition of what insider trading is and where you can find information on insider trading. Definition. Insider trading is any trading in a company's stock by the company's officers, directors, or influential shareholders. Influential shareholders tend to own more than 10% of a company's stock. To provide an example, consider the trades that I show below. These are for a public company called Titan International, which makes farm tires. You can see a column called trade date. This shows the date of trade. You can also see the insider name under the column insider. So you see Peter McNitt, Paul Reitz, John Erdlicka, and Maury Taylor. You can see their positions. They're director, president, CFO, and chairman, CEO. And below that you have a influential shareholder, a 10% owner. You can see the number of shares they purchased. You can see how for what price they paid on average for, per share. And then you can see the aggregate value, which is just the product of the price and the quantity of shares. And then you can see how many shares they owned following the transaction. So for example, Maury Taylor, who's the chairman and CEO, purchased 100,000 shares at $5.30 for $530,000 worth of purchase value, and now owns 450,000 shares. He holds these directly, which means he holds them in his brokerage account. Many insiders also trade indirectly because they trade in their 401k account or in their trust. So why do we care about insider trading? Well, insiders have a bigger information set than outsiders. Insiders, like a CEO, is in the office on a day-to-day -day basis. He knows how every factory is performing. He knows how every product is selling on the shelves. He meets with customers and gets better sense of how they think about the product. He also meets with suppliers and knows any risks in the supply chain. He also talks to the bank and knows about available funding for expansion. The, this bigger information set may allow executives to have a better sense of the intrinsic value of a business. And therefore, when they make a trade in the open market, they reveal to the broader investment community something perhaps about their larger investment set, information set. They show that the value that they derive from their larger information set is higher than the stock price. And that's why it's important to follow insider trading. Another reason to follow insider trading is that when you buy a company, you want the executives who are in charge to be well incentivized. You want that if they own stock and if they're buying more stock, that they're increasing their incentives to do hard work. If you imagine a CEO who only receives cash compensation, the CEO only has the effort, uh, has the incentive to do the minimal amount of effort necessary to keep the job. If a CEO is actively purchasing stock and holds a large amount of stock, then the CEO is going to get a lot of the upside as well as the downside, and they have incentive to do hard work because low effort may re result in lower prices and actually is costly. High effort, such as expansion, developing new products, and finding new customers, actually rewards the, share, the, the executive. So how can we find more information about these insider trades since they are valuable? Well, they, every insider has to file a Form 4 within three business days of making a trade. And in this case, I'm giving you an example of Maury Taylor, again, the chairman and CEO. You can see in the middle row that he purchased common stock on November 6th. The code is a P. It would be an S if he sold, but it's a P because he purchased. He bought 100,000 shares and at $5.30, and again, he has 450,000 shares after his purchase. You can find this Form 4 at a database called the SEC Edgar database. Just Google SEC Edgar, and you can search then by ticker symbol or you can search by company name. Just remember that when you do a search, make sure you select the radio button that says include ownership filings, because if you don't do that, no Form 4 will show up. Perhaps an easier way is to go to third-party sites like openinsider.com, insidercow.com, or secform4.com. 
These third-party sites feed from the SEC Edgar database, but they do a little bit of processing too and help weed out some un uninformative reports. Now, given that insiders have this informational advantage over outsiders, how is this legal? How is it, how, how is it that they are allowed to make these trades? Well, insiders are allowed to make trades as long as they are unaware of what's called material private information. First, private information means that it has not been disseminated widely through a newswire service in the form of a press release. Material information means that it would move the stock price in a material way in, upon learning about the news. So examples of material information include a pending acquisition of the company at a high price, a lost customer who makes up a large percent of sales, or a pending labor union strike that would disrupt produ production at a factory. All of these pieces of information would have dramatic implications for stock price in the short term. Now, CEOs always have access to better information, and it's private, and so what, what really makes it material? Well, this is the gray area, and it's up for, up for debate. For example, CEOs have better information about how every product is selling, and they often report only aggregate sales statistics to the investment community and earnings calls. Now, that's okay. It's not necessarily material that they have better information, but it, it, it does suggest that it's material when the CEO declines to share that information because they say that it would put valuable information in the hands of the competition, which is a very common excuse when analysts ask the CEO, how is that product selling? The CEO often says, well, we don't want to put that information in the hands of the competition, which suggests that the CEO knows something that is valuable that the outside investors do not, and yet they trade in their stock. So what is fair or not, whether the benefits of allowing insiders to trade or not is a debate. Okay, up next, I'm going to give you examples of illegal insider trading to color what that means. And I hope you join me. And if you liked this lecture, or if you have questions or comments, or you want to hear something about something else, feel free to give comments below. And if you enjoyed this series, please subscribe below and share it with your friends. Thank you. See you next time.